We are back guys, finally. We are gonna be talking about Interstellar uh, 4K. It's been, it came out in 2014, so what is that, about six years later? Put that right down there. All right guys, so this is directed by Christopher Nolan, it stars Matthew McConaughey. Someone else, I'm not gonna say, if you don't know, Matt Damon, fuck it. Uh, you guys have seen this by now, Anne Hathaway, uh, Jessica Chastain, Michael Caine, and Casey Affleck. This film is, came out, like I said, 2014, and it's a space exploration. These people need to go on this space mission that involves Lazarus where putting yourself in the cryo and traveling to a different solar system to find a new habitat world. Guys, this is one of Nolan's first, second, first, I don't know what you want to consider for visual effects. You can consider Inception a lot of visual effects, but I feel like this has a lot more visual effects. So I'm going to say this is Nolan's first biggest visual effects uh, CGI film and guys, this movie looks incredible. So one of the aspects I really love about this film is Matthew McConaughey's character of Coop. He is so relatable in this film and he's so emotional, emotionally packed and I love his portrayal of this character in this film. It is incredible. But one of the things I really liked about this film a lot was actually him being home before we get into the actual space like exploration. That shit's phenomenal, how it looks, what happens to the other planets, the mountains, aka Waves Planet, uh Matthew McCon or uh, Matt Damon's fucking ice planet I call it, or very cold planet. That's really all that's cool. But one of the things that really sets you up in this film and it is greatly crafted is Matthew McConaughey's life and I love how his he's, his relationship with his family, how his daughter Murph, he doesn't want to leave her and stuff like that. And he's like always got that bond with his daughter. It's just so fucking well done. I honestly, this is, I'm going to get a lot of controversy, but I really like being on Earth more in this world than, a little bit more I'm going to say, than the space exploration. Yeah, the space exploration is fucking cool as fuck, but... What Nolan did with this story was crafted a really well, like, emotionally packed part of um, Coop in the story. And I think that's an incredible thing to do. But, like, let's talk about Hans Zimmer's score. Loud as fuck, but incredible. Uh, guys, this is a fucking amazing, st like, score. I honestly think this is, besides the Batman films for me, I think this is one of Nolan's, or Zimmer's, best Nolan scores. Like, yeah, Dunkirk, Inception. I really love Inception. And, um, yeah, it's... I think that's it. And Interstellar, obviously. Um, I think this one's really loud, but it really sends an emotional message. And it's got that weird kind of... You guys know what I'm talking about, that kind of gothic vibe sometimes, too, when the music um, or the score starts playing in certain spots and stuff like that. But we all know that Coop's motivation is to get this going get up to space, and get fucking home back to his family as soon as possible, and it ends up taking a toll on him 23 years, decades, until he can get back. And, guys, this film, I was rooting the whole time for Coop to get home to his daughter, his, his son, and I wanted it so badly. And what do I think about how the story ended? I feel like it could have ended with him just floating there. I don't know if they need to show um, like him going to see his daughter and she's just like pushing him away in a way. Oh, no um, no father should see their kid die in that. That's fucking weird. But um, personally, I think that that didn't need to be there, but I did like it, not going to lie. I really did like it. It gives that emotional punch and then he ends up going to try to find Dr. Brand after that in um, one of those spaceships or whatever the fuck they're called they're really fucking cool but the way this world is built by the cgi that's really what i want to talk about it's probably going to take up most of the part of the review guys this is when cgi is not even noticeable this film looks fucking good uh the wormhole i remember they did like research about how to make the wormhole and the black hole and stuff like that they actually brought in scientists and that and it just looks so fucking incredible the space the cinematography looks amazing on the ground as well, like when they're going through the cornfield chase and stuff like that, and mask up um, with the, all the dust in that. Isn't that kind of relevant in a way to today? But also, when you're in space, though, it just looks so fucking real, and it's, that's what I love about CGI. You get these superhero films 
this one, eh, this one, and this one. CGI, we we can we know it's not everything's not real in the film. We know that, but this film it makes you think twice and like, holy shit, the CGI is incredible. Like, was some of this filmed in space and stuff like that? It just that's good CGI, and I'm glad Nolan pulled off really incre incredible CGI. Well, we all know his motto though too is like. He wants to do as many practical effects as he can. But when he needs to do visual effects, he will make them the best fucking possible. Now, this film was not uh, distributed by WB. I do not know why. I really, if you guys know, let me know in the comments below why this film wasn't distributed by WB. But it was Paramount that ended up taking this project. I can't believe WB wouldn't want to take another Nolan project like this. But they bought him back for Dunker, which was, which is next I'm going to be really, like, really reviewing. But guys... Let's stay tuned. Um, I'm going to remind you about the Tenet, uh, the Tenet 4K giveaway. We need to get through 100 subscribers in order for me to unlock access to potentially giving it all the way or giving the code away to one of you lucky viewers out there or subscribers. Make sure you're subscribed too. And I'll make sure. But uh, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.